This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special, special, special guest today is a talented singer-songwriter from Toronto, Canada. Her name is Nuella Charles. Ms. Charles, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm so good. Thank you for having me. Great. Thank you. Welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Thanks. So I got some information. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got some information from your from your team and they sent me over your latest EP called Blissful Madness. And I must tell you that uh, I just love the, all the tracks on that EP. Um, we're gonna talk about that, but before we do, um, for those who don't know Nuella Charles, tell us about yourself. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I'm Nuella. I was, I mean, if we go all the way back, I was born in Kenya. <laughs> Uh, and then immigrated to Canada when I was like seven. Um, but I guess what led me to this place right here talking to you is just my love of music. And I became a singer songwriter uh, in my early 20s. And I actually like in my teens and I tried writing songs and none of them were really good. <laughs> but eventually, you know, I just got better. And yeah, now I'm here just sharing songs about you know, just the things that I was observed in my own life and just things that I want to talk about, really. So, yeah, just happy to be here to chat about my new EP and just to share music with more people. OK, great. And we're, we're happy to have you. Um, let's kind of back up a little bit to your childhood. Now, I read your bio and said you were born in Kenya, but you also lived in Switzerland, the Bahamas and Canada. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, I. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> the... Yeah, it's it's uh, it's definitely been a, a trip around the world, <laughs> thanks to my parents. Okay, were your parents um, were they military or something? Why did they did they just want to live in different places? Or yeah, my mom's actually from Kenya, and my dad is from Switzerland. So he, from what I understand, he was on a world trip. Um, this was like in the eighties. He was just traveling around the world. And then um, at one point he stopped in Kenya and he started living there full time and working um, as a like mechanical manager for a safari club. And they would take, you know, groups out into the wilderness and like do the camping and all this stuff. And um, through mutual friends, my parents met each other. And I guess that's kind of the history of that. <laughs> and then I came to be and then, uh, after a couple of years, we moved to Switzerland, where my dad's from and his family. And their dream has always been to live in Canada mm. um, on a ranch and live as cowboys. So that was the big, like, the big dream. And uh, so we immigrated to Canada in 1990, I believe it was. And yeah, it's just been living on a ranch and growing up in a just totally different lifestyle. I didn't speak English like the first year I was there. Um, and then after seven years, we moved to the Bahamas and lived and worked there. And, and it's just like, I, I think it's just the, the, the free spiritedness of my parents, but also knowing that my dad's very Swiss and very regimented <laughs> and very like, you know, there's not too much free spiritedness, but for him, it was like, oh, I'll just apply and see what happens. And sure enough, we end up in the Bahamas. So we lived there for five years. And that's really where my musical side started coming out. And I started writing and started playing in youth bands and just growing my skills, even like trying to record myself. Um, and so that's kind of where that grew and developed. And then after five years, we moved back to Canada um, and I just kind of kept going with it. And yeah, now I'm here. Okay. Do you have, uh, do you have siblings as well? Yeah, I have four, 
three siblings. <laughs> I have to think about that one. Uh, three siblings, all younger. So I am the oldest. Um, and sometimes I just wonder, like, do I even know what I'm doing with my life? <laughs> you know, you always kind of have that uh, uh, weight on your shoulders. But I'm really happy to have the support behind me and just people rooting me on. Okay. Did any of your siblings follow you into the uh, music business? No, they didn't. My, uh, they all actually played music and they're all very musical in their own way. And my sister growing up was very much into musical theater. Um, and we all played in the same like youth band. So like my brother would be on uh, drums or bass and my sister would sing. And so it was all kind of together, but I was the only one who really went for it and tried to create like an artist out of myself. Okay. So you knew, um, you knew early on, this is what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it was just seeing other female artists kind of do their own thing. And this was like the, the era of like MTV and like TRL, like totally dating myself, but, uh, like Michelle Branch, Vanessa Carlton, Fifi Dobbs and Avril Lavigne, like just these girls, like Alicia Keys. Oh my God. Like when, you know, she came out and she started playing, piano like there's a young lady playing an instrument like for me it was like so, so eye-opening and it just made it more achievable like I never thought it was unrealistic to try to go for that and maybe I'm just naive I don't know but I just like I was like if they can do it I can do it so it was just straight ahead from there okay uh we mentioned your um your new EP uh Blissful Madness um, but let's back up a little bit. When did you, or how did you get your start? I got my start, uh, like my first professional thing I put out was in 2012. And so that was my first Noella Charles record. And it was prior to that, I had put out two separate EP projects. Um, but those were kind of looking back now, they were testers. They were a testing ground for me. It was my ability to see like, how does this work? How does this putting out music thing work? How does touring work? And I was able to take all of those experiences and the things that I've learned and really put it into this package. And um, for me, it was, it clicked when I realized that it is a music business and you have to present yourself in a certain way. And I wanted to be able to like sit side by side in a record store beside you know Adele and whoever and them not be able to tell if this is an indie artist or not and so that's from the packaging to the sound quality and maybe that's just me but like I was like I I, I can do it it's gonna take a lot of work but since then 2010 I really just started building the business side and really trying to bring myself to a level that is comparable to these artists that we all love. Um, and so from there, I put out a few records and started gaining traction and um, just continually building, continually learning and trying to better myself, really. Okay. Are you a independent artist? Or are you signed to a label? Um, yeah, I am work? fully independent right now. And I have been up until this point. Um, yeah, just building my team slowly. Um, in Canada, it's, it's kind of, I mean, now it's a bit better, but it's always been difficult being different, um, not being um, what the Canadian music industry might uh, push forward um, because I didn't look a certain way. I didn't sound a certain way. Um, and it would have been easier to just I mean, it wouldn't have been easier, but people would always ask, why don't you go to like Los Angeles? Why don't you go to America? And it's always like, well, I don't want to have to leave to, you know, further myself. And so it has been a challenge, but, you know, getting the right team together was very important. And so that's where I am now. And we're, you know, working on new music and hopefully that will um, maybe land its way onto a label, but it's also, we're in a time where, we don't really need labels to, you know, push yourself forward and succeed. So that's a discussion that we're constantly having and trying to see like what's best, but yeah, that's kind of where I'm at now. Okay. Let me, uh, let me back up just a little bit. Um, you had touched a little bit on the sound um, coming from Canada. Was it 
more hip hop or what, what do you mean when you say um, there was a different sound or um, you had to work hard to. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's in, especially when I was, you know, really starting out, it was more uh, leaning towards indie artists. So it would be um, indie rock, rock country are really favored, are really uh, pushed in the industry. And for me, um, being more soul, more alt, it wasn't something that people were used to, especially like if I was looking for, you know, a and or a booking agent or like whatever it may have been, like those weren't, my genre wasn't the genre that <laughs> people would go to first. And so that was the challenge that I was facing um, in trying to push myself forward is finding those champions, finding those people that um, would understand the music that I'm making, but then also, um, you know, not be afraid to do something that they might not be used to. So, yeah, so that's kind of what I mean by that. But we got there eventually. And now I think, um, especially in the last couple of years, there's been such a uh, rise of great Canadian talent in the hip hop and R&B field. And just, you know, having them open the doors has just allowed p- artists like me to really, you know, step in and, and do my thing too. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad. Um, I'm glad you touched on that because we've interviewed or I've interviewed maybe four or five artists from Canada and they're all putting out just great music. And so, um, in fact, I was joking with one saying, what is going on in Canada? Cause all this great music is coming out and we Mm. haven't really been exposed to it too much outside of, uh, interviewing artists like yourself. So I'm glad that it's gotten better because there's some really talented uh, artists up in uh, up in Canada. We'll continue our episode after this message. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code. BGRC WQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Now, back to our conversation. Um, okay, well, thank you for sharing that. Let's talk about this new EP, Blissful Madness. And I believe the concept was something like um, the emotions you go through in a 24 hour period or something along those lines is the meaning behind it. Yeah, we had, uh, you know, we had a, a few songs that were finished and or like that I was almost finished with. And it was like trying as we were as I was working through the songs, I realized this tying theme and like this was prior to the pandemic. And so when I looked back at it, you know, getting ready to release it, it's like this fits perfect with what <laughs> we're all dealing with. It's like, I mean, I, mean, I was alone, like in my own place, but imagine being with your, your partner, your significant other. And then just like, and I like when I write, I write as if I'm writing for a movie sometimes or like to a certain scene. And so this just like, it all made sense in my head. And I was like, imagine the drama. (laughs) So you would start off just like loving each other uh, to wanting your space to like, never speak to me again. Um, but yeah, like individually, they stand on their own. And it's, it was just nice to be able to tie them together in a way because I like the album format. I like having a story tie through the entire um, project. Um, and sometimes with EPs, you don't get that. You just get, you know, a couple of songs and that's it. But right. with this one, I really tried to make it make sense. You know, it's funny you mentioned uh, being a visual writer because when yeah. I listen to a song like Nerve, for example, I can imagine, um, and maybe, you know, most people can imagine having that conversation with someone you've been involved with and for whatever reason didn't didn't work out quite the way you want. And mm-hmm. having some of those conversations, which I can actually see that in the song, you know. Um, did you do all the writing on this uh, EP? For the most part, Nerve was actually brought to me. So it was... Mm-hmm 
one of those songs that, you know, I, I pride myself on writing my music and I was always like, I'm never going to take anybody's song. I'm never going, you know, like never going to happen, even though all of the, the huge artists do it all the time. Um, but when it was played to me, I was just like, oh, no, this is, oh, what are, what do we have here? Um, and so, yeah, I just fell in love with it. And it was, the challenge was to be able to take the song and make it my own and something that I could really stand behind and be like, this is my song. Because at the end of the, the day, I'm going to be singing it for the rest of my life. Um, so that was really important to me. So I worked, you know, hard on the production and just to get it feeling the way that I would want it to feel. And I'm really proud of, proud of, proud of it and just super happy that it fell in my lap. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. Was the song specifically written for you or? No, it was just, I don't even know. Like we were playing, we were working on new music and then, uh, listening to like inspiration stuff and I had mentioned one of my uh, like favorite artists from the UK and then the producer was like well I have a song that I wrote with her and I was like are you kidding me <laughs> and so it kind of tied into that way and yeah I just I, I loved the honestness and just the vulnerability but also like just she was just so like it just it exudes like don't try me like that just an attitude of like don't no not here not today not ever <laughs> you know? so that's what I loved about it and that's totally me because I'm not the one to you know sit and cry about something I'm just like okay it's done goodbye um and so that's what I really loved about it okay and how long has that EP been out uh a week a couple a week. weeks yeah I think it was the end of April it came out Okay. And it might be a little too early now, but how has it been received thus far? It's been really good. Um, I think it, it's just nice to get new music out. Last year was just, I didn't do anything <laughs> like in terms of putting out stuff. And so this was just great to put new music out and the response has been great. People like they, they go in their phases. Like I'll have like, Oh my God, space is just on repeat. And then like the next week it's like, no, now it's nerve. I can't get this out of my head. And I just had today, someone was like more by the minute is like on repeat all the time. And I'm like, perfect. You know, there's a song for each moment. And that's, I think the goal that I had in mind. Okay. Well, I can certainly attest to playing it over and over again. Um, so you mentioned a little bit, you touched on it briefly about the pandemic and you didn't do, you didn't do much. And I'm assuming that was by design because you couldn't get out. Uh -huh. um, do you foresee yourself? Um, well, you just released this EP. Are there more releases coming this year or it's kind of like a wait and see or? Yeah, this year, uh, I don't know. Maybe there's a Christmas thing coming. I, I love doing those, but uh, we're definitely working on uh, an album project. So it's just going to be a bunch of writing this year and just finding um, just great songs and working with different producers. And um, because of the pandemic, a lot of it is now on Zoom and virtually. Um, but it's just allowed me even more so to connect with people that I probably wouldn't have. Um, if I would have had to travel there. So it's been great. Um, and just kind of getting the ball rolling with that once all of the blissful madness uh, press is over. But uh, yeah, I'm just excited for a new chapter and just to, you know, everyone's going to be so happy next year. Like, <laughs> you know, like everyone's just going to be so happy. So I just want to, you know, give something to the world that, you know, m mirrors that, I think. Okay. <clears throat> excuse me yeah i know um there's a lot of people going through covid withdrawal now because it's you know they're finally free and um, <laughs> you know so i think yeah. slowly but surely um starting to get back to normal um mm -hmm. now we talked about blissful madness but let's talk about some of your other um your previous albums you've been pretty consistent um releasing new music i i think the first um what I read was like in 2012. Mm -hmm. Was that your first release? Yep. So my first album, Aware, was in 2012. And 
like all of those songs I had written by myself and I, you know, found some local producers and was very hands-on and like how I wanted it to sound <laughs> like maybe like they just hated me after the fact because I tore apart the songs and rebuilt them. And um, I think that's just how I work. I always wanted to be better, but 2012 was the first record. And then from there, there was a big four year gap where again, it was just learning and trying to, you know, figure out the industry and how do I, you know, tour the country that's so big with like zero cities in between. <laughs> and it's just all those things. And then my next record was 2016, the grand hustle. And then from there, it was kind of a steady every two years or one year I put out a project and um, really felt, tried to keep the momentum going and um, kind of just keep, yeah, my foot in the door, you know, so to speak, to, to keep people interested and just, yeah, it was, it was great. And now I'm just happy. I think last year was great because it made me slow down and it made me stop um, where I probably would have put out something again like a year later. Um, but yeah, no, everything's for a reason. So I'm really happy with how things turned out. Agreed. Um, now you mentioned the business side of growth from 2012 mm -hmm. to where we are now. Do you feel the music has gotten better? Oh my goodness. Yes, totally. Um, some songs I can, I can basically listen to every album back and not have a problem there's maybe one song on each record that I will never listen to again because <laughs> I'm just like that was horrible but uh yeah definitely I, I like even my the band that I usually play with um my go-to guys they were messaging me like this is your best music yet to date and I think that's a goal is always to create something better than the last thing. I always want to be bettering myself as an artist. Um, and, you know, and if that means taking a song that someone's, you know, presented to me and making it my own is something I would have probably not have done like four years ago, maybe even like three years ago. And so just understanding that just because you didn't write the song doesn't mean it's not yours. Doesn't mean you didn't make it yours. Doesn't mean that you can't tell that story. Um, and that's just looking to like artists way before me, like who are massive, who have just had, you know, their names written in history, who've done that too. And you wouldn't really know and unless you really dug into it, into the history of the songs that a lot of these hit songs, they didn't write. And so for me, it was kind of reassuring, but just knowing that my goal is to always get better and that's just part of it. Okay. What is your, um, your writing process? Do you set time out every day to write or is it just comes to you? How do you, how do you create? Yeah. It, when I write, it's definitely a mix of both. Like I sometimes will, some like I've had this in the last two months I'll be dreaming and I'll be dreaming that I wrote like this most amazing song and I'll be singing it out and then halfway through the dream I wake up and realize I need to voice memo this and so then I'll try to voice memo it and I listen back in the morning and it's nothing <laughs> like I can't vividly remember what I was singing but I just knew in that moment it was like the top hit in the world but I what I actually recorded was not it um so there's moments like that, but then it's also just being, um, what's the word, like being intentional and sitting down and writing and exercising that muscle and knowing that, you know, you got to write a few bad songs before you get to that, like, great one. And so a lot of that is just, yeah, just putting pen to paper. Um, and I'm trying to, you know, with COVID and pandemic, I've really tried to hone in on my production skills and um, just to have that ability to track my own vocals in my apartment or like get like easy ideas down so then I can pass them on and be like, this is what I'm thinking about. What do you think? And so forth. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's a mixed bag. And sometimes I really just like taking my acoustic guitar, sitting on the couch and like playing around and then something will come forth. And then I'm like, oh, this is a great idea. And so I've had songs come that way too. So yeah, it's kind of a mixed bag. 
Okay. Um, let me ask you a quick question too about the songwriting process. When do you know when you write a song? When did you know that, okay, this is it. We got it. Nothing more needs to be done. We're oh. done. I think it's just, I mean, for me, it's probably just a feeling like, I feel like, for example, I wrote a song on a couch, on my couch with my guitar, and I voice memoed it. And it was just, it was a free flow of like, I think I had three or four different takes on my, on my phone of what it was, but I had the verse and I had the chorus. I just was listening a bridge. Um, and then I just sent it to my producer and I was like, this is my next song. And it ended up being like a really good, it's called Known Better. Um, and that ended up being on like a Netflix TV show, you know, last year. So it was like, I think it just depends. And I've had instances where I've worked, you know, working on album projects where I'll, we'll go through the batch of songs. We've recorded them basically all fully demoed. And then the producers are like, this is done. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> And so then we like scrapped, like the songs were done, but it was more in terms of the production and, you know, just elevating that and not settling for what we originally came up with just because we thought it was good in the moment. And so in those instances, it's, a, it's about sitting back, looking at it, and then really having to have the ability to articulate what it is I want it to sound like. And I'm not always the best in that. Um, and so there you need to have... Uh, collaborators that are willing to, to do that because not everybody is but uh it's also just finding your vision and sticking true to it I think is really important too okay um now you mentioned uh I guess we I was gonna touch on um the Instagram and Facebook live you had mentioned Zoom uh do you do are you doing a lot of that or I am not doing a lot of the live stuff um, on social media. Um, my management probably would like me to do more. I just, for me, it has to be authentic. So if I feel like um, doing a live, like I did a live stream, I think it was, a, it was my birthday and I did a live stream DJ Instagram uh, live or whatever. And so I had a playlist and I was playing it on his IG as I was celebrating my birthday alone <laughs> with people online. So that was authentic to me. Um, I think last year there was an influx of that and everybody was doing live streams and everybody was playing every day. And that to me was just so overwhelming um, because then it's like, I have to learn another technology. I have to do this. And um I like Instagram because I can, you know, it's more curated and I can really put out what I want, but also kind of like tell stories with it. Um, but yeah, it's just a learning, like now it's TikTok. <laughs> so I'm trying to get on board with that, but everything, you know, has its place. And I think if you can pick one and make it really good and make that your home, then I think people will gravitate toward, towards that as well. Okay. I agree. Um, May, you know, we're kind of in the middle of 2021. Do you foresee live performances this year or what, what did your gut tell you about getting out there and performing? I, I don't know where you are, <laughs> but where I am, we're kind of behind on the whole uh, vaccine uh, thing. And so I don't know, like I would, I honestly would love it if we could go and have live performances now. But I know even I had a, a, a live stream book for the end of this month where I would be in a venue performing live to like with a pr professional production and everything. And that's been pushed back um, mm -hmm. because of government regulations. So I, I don't know. I see a lot of festival dates being announced and I'm, I'm always optimistic, but it's like, I don't know if that's the best thing to do right now, but that's just my opinion. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully, um, hopefully you get a chance to, at some point, um, tour the U S too. I think you have mm -hmm, some great mm -hmm. music that I think you will garner a lot of fans. 
Yeah, that's the next place that we really want to tackle. It's always difficult. Um, I mean, you would think it wouldn't be because the border is just right there, but it definitely is a challenge crossing the line. Um, but that's definitely a goal to come down there and just share the music. And I have a lot of listeners and people online are the majority are from America. So it is, you know, definitely high up on my list. Okay. Uh, Noella, tell people where they can uh, reach out to you on uh, social media. Definitely. All of my online platform social media are at Noella Charles. So it sounds like Nutella, but it's Noella and it's N-U-E-L-A Charles. Um, and my website is NuellaCharles.com. And that's kind of the hub for everything. Okay. And so Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, it's all Noella Charles. Mm-hmm. Okay. Definitely. Great. And where can we pick up your music? Wherever you stream music, wherever you buy music online, um, search Noella Charles and you'll find me there. Um, Physically, if you want, you can check out my uh, merch store online and I will ship it to you with all the love and care I have in the world. Um, And that's at NuellaCharles.Bandcamp.com. But if you just go to my website, you'll find a link to the store and it's there. And I have vinyl of uh, my last record, Distant Danger, available. Um, but yeah, everything's really easy, all accessible from your phone or mobile or computer or whatever. Okay. And you also have a, a YouTube channel too, correct? Yeah, I have a YouTube channel with all of my music videos on there, um, which is, it's really great to be able to also like take the songs that I've written and then create, you know, visual companions to them and uh, I like doing that as well. So all of those are up um, for your viewing pleasure. Okay. I will encourage uh, people to not only lis- listen to Blissful Madness, but also some of your earlier stuff too, which is great, I think. Um, anything else, Nuella, uh, you want to add before we uh, cut this interview? No, I'm just really thankful to have, you know, a platform to be able to share my music and share my stories and to have people like you wanting to, you know, tell those stories. So thank you for having me and continuing to support independent music um, because that's how we keep, you know, the artistry going. And, you know, you never know who you interview might be the next big, big thing or whatever that means. But I just love sharing and yeah. I'll chat with whoever, whenever. Okay. And uh, don't forget the little people, Nuella, when you uh, (laughs) get something at Grammy or something. I don't know. There you go. Just little people. But anyway, (laughs) Nuella, I appreciate you coming on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. All right. And that's Nuella Charles on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. And we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Miss Nuella Charles. You can find out more about Nuella on her website at nuellacharles.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, check out all our merch at the soul shop at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.